CataractCoach.com, showing you cataract surgery in pseudo-exfoliation syndrome. Here, preoperatively, you can see all that extensive material. When we zoom in on the scope during surgery, again, we can see this fibrillar material on the anterior lens capsule and also there on the pupil margin. And that's important to document how much that this material there is, plus we want to document the amount of dilation. So here's preoperatively, we can see the zone of clearing followed by pseudoxfoliation material on the anterior lens capsule. And of course, that zone of clearing is from the iris movement, which ends up wiping the anterior lens capsule. Here, we're able to dilate the eye preoperatively with stronger solutions like 10% phenylephrine to get past that area, and so we can really have a reasonable dilation here. We'll fill the eye with viscoelastic, and as we're doing this, we want to make sure that we have a reasonable lens iris diaphragm. Make sure the zonage support is reasonable in this case. We'll make our main incision here with a diamond keratome. Now, one of the important things to remember in these cases is you have to look at the anterior chamber depth in relation to the axial length. A very short anterior chamber depth in relation to a normal axial length can mean a very loose lens iris diaphragm. Now here, doing the capsule axis, we're going to watch carefully on the anterior lens capsule to see how wrinkling, how wrinkly does it get. We poke in there, we start to grab with forceps. It looks pretty reasonable. Is the capsule taut or is it loose? And it looks pretty good, actually. So I think for me, the important prognostic signs are, what's the preoperative dilation? If it dilates like this eye, which is reasonably well, that's a good sign. How much material is there on the anterior lens capsule? If there's a lot of material, that can sometimes be a warning. And then also, what's the anterior chamber depth in relation to the axial length? Also remember that pseudoxfoliation tends to be a little asymmetric, one eye more than the other. So you have a basis for comparison. We'll get into that. So now with the good rex is done, do some hydro dissection. We aim for about a five or five and a half millimeter capsular rexus. Important not to make a small or baby sized capsular rexus because these patients are prone to getting capsular phimosis later and you don't want to have that tiny rexus. So we have a good sized rexus here. We'll recoat the endothelium with our dispersive viscoelastic and now ready for our phaco probe. We're going to do a chop in the capsule bag, chop this in half with a vertical or combo chop, and then we'll bring each half out of the capsule bag to minimize the stress on the bag. So buzz into the phaco probe, holding the nucleus with vacuum. Notice how the nucleus does not move, and we just chop it into two halves. Now one half can be brought up out of the capsule bag. Again, we don't want to be inside the capsule bag causing stress. The zonger apparatus is going to be weak, Certainly not going to be normal in a pseudoxfoliation eye like this. But if we bring the nuclear pieces up to the iris plane and aspirate them there at that position, that's a safe uh, place because you're out of the capsule bag, so there's no stress there. Here we can sub-chop the nucleus even more. And then again, we're still away from the central coil endothelium. This is not anterior chamber phaco. It's not riding near the endothelium. This is at the iris plane. Chopper just being used now to feed that last piece in, and also as protection. We've got the smooth side of the chopper towards the capsule bag. So in case there is any zonular laxity or floppiness of the capsule bag, that can be uh, act as a barrier to prevent the capsule bag from touching the phaco tip. Looks like we're pretty much done with removing the nuclear pieces. We can come out of the eye. Now it's time for cortex removal. This is a really critical step. During cortex removal, you want to watch the edge of the capsular axis. Of course, we're stripping away the cortex material, but we don't want to see any movement of the capsular axis edge. If the capsular axis edge is moving inwards, it means the zonules are not holding it firmly, and we're breaking zonules or we're causing more laxity in the zonules. So watch the rexus edge, and in this case, it's pretty good. It just doesn't move. So... What do you think this patient's going to have a very nice result? And I think she should, she should have long-term stability um, with the IOL. So we'll put a single piece of acrylic lens in her capsule bag. So nice and easy, removing all the cortex material. And again, you'll notice that the capsule rexus edge is very still, does not move. So that tells me good zoner support all around. Not much of an issue. We'll clean up our capsule bag here a little bit more. A little capsule polishing, get these last few strands out. Looking good. Now fill up our capsule bag, 
and with our cohesivus glassic. So here's some cohesive in the anterior chamber, but I need to get it in the bag more. So let's go underneath that and go deep. Yeah, there we go. I want to deepen the caps or bag, not just deepen the anterior chamber. So that looks much better. Now look at this picture here. Right eye and left eye, pre-op picture. So the right eye has a lot more extensive pseudoexfoliation material, very little on the left. Um, be, uh, worse dilation on the right as well. And importantly, a short axial length on the left eye, but normal AC. The right eye is a long axial length, but a shallower AC depth. And that's because, again, that lens iris diaphragm is loose, so it pushes forwards. Fortunately, in this case, we've had no major issues. Delivering the lens now in the capsule bag. Going in nice and easy. This is a single piece acrylic lens, monofocal lens, and we're aiming for a post op refraction of just a tiny bit of myopia, minus a quarter to minus a half of myopia. This patient happens to be uh, functionally monocular. She has some dense anisometropic amblyopia in the other eye. And so this is her major seeing eye, and she wants very useful all around vision, and minus a half is probably a good choice for her. Going behind the eye wall optic now, let's remove all those viscoelastic. Again, watching the capsorexis edge, making sure that doesn't move. And again, here we have a good deal of stability. So everything so far looks very nice. Take out all our viscoelastic and we'll seal this up. Now you gotta watch this patient in the post-op period, make sure the inflammation resolves uh, relatively fast. Also make sure the patient doesn't have any underlying glaucomatous issues. And finally, see the patient a few months after surgery to make sure we're not getting any caps or phimosis. Thank you for watching. I sincerely appreciate it, and I hope you've learned a lot about pseudoexfoliation.